Good day, morning, afternoon, or evening to everyone, wherever you happen to be. My name is Jim Johnson, and I'm a member of the Democracy at Work Network, and here in the United States, we are a network of experienced worker owners from Worker Co-op who have made ourselves available to other worker co-ops and to people seeking to start worker co-ops. I've been uh, through the Sociocracy for All training session number three, and I'm currently a member of the co-op circle in Sociocracy for All. I wanted to give you our perspective on co-ops and how Sociocracy could be a very important model for co-ops. And, um, and how they might represent an important innovation by bringing the two entities together. And um, uh, co-ops are enterprises by which people meet their common needs and aspirations. And it's, there's an important distinction between co-ops and other types of organizations. Typically, co-ops are situated within the legal framework and are considered corporations by their local laws, as distinct from nonprofit organizations. The critical thing is that co-ops are not charities. Co-ops are self-help organizations. Co-ops are enterprises. They often take the form of businesses, in fact. But even where they are not strictly businesses, they are much more like enterprises in which people organize together independently and in a self-determining and self-governing way. And importantly, they generate their own economic activity and meet their own needs economically. And independence is a critical thing about co-ops and, and their uh, outside, their, their freedom from outside sources. They interact as peers and equals with their outside sources of funding, whether they're loans or um, other types of stakeholders. So they're independent economic entities, self-organized and democratic. And co-ops may be owned by the people who need to patronize a business, like a consumer cooperative, a food cooperative, for example. Um, here in the US, most food cooperatives are owned by the customers. Uh, co-ops may also be owned by producers of goods. Agricultural co-ops are a very important part of the sector here in the United States. For example, 40% of the produce in the United States <clears throat> moves through agricultural co-ops, which are owned by farmers and governed democratically by their member farmers. Worker co-ops are also considered a type of producer co-op. There are many other types of co-ops. Practically any business can be operated as a cooperative. And typically we have many of the co-ops in the US use board structures. Um, the members will elect a board of representatives. The representatives will oversee the management of the cooperative. Many of the smaller cooperatives, especially worker-owned cooperatives, will use a more horizontal structure and collectives. These have been the two dominant forms of governance in cooperatives, and this is problematic because board structures, while they're predominant and they can work pretty well, they also have many of the problems that representative democracy, civic representative democracy has. Collectives can also work very well, especially in smaller organizations, but, it, but they typically have require a lot of effort to set up and they have to be very thoroughly customized and designed based on the culture of their organization in order to work well. So we have these two options for governance and co-ops, board structures and collectivist structures. And uh, both of them tend to struggle and have various issues. For many years, myself and others have been looking for other, other ways in which we can govern cooperatives. And this is where so sociocracy enters. And we've actually, uh, our document today offers a, a case study of the Blue Scorcher Bakery Cafe, a worker-owned cafe in the Pacific Northwest that is um, a good example of, I hope you can see this well, a good example of a worker-owned cooperative using sociocracy. We'll briefly review this diagram here. You can see that they have their general circle um, where everyone is convened 
and everyone is represented and the uh, various departments of Blue Scorcher, uh, bread, cafe and prep, chocolate, maintenance, pastry, all have their own circles for representative. And to help clarify how the worker owner structure interfaces with the sociocratic structure, we can see on the left that the worker owners elect a board of directors in this case, and the board of directors interact with a general circle. And so there's one example, there's definitely variations on this that are possible. I'm conducting another case study right now on a, a multi-stakeholder cooperative that is owned by worker owners, uh, consumers, and farmers jointly, three different stakeholder groups. And uh, their circle structure is a bit complex. They tell me they have 17 circles operating, although most of them are not nearly so active. The worker co-ops, but the worker owners tend to be the strong and dominant circle. <laughs> Thank you for the comment about the chocolate circle. Um, so there's one example of how sociocracy can be structured within a worker cooperative and uh, or within a cooperative in general. I will make this document available to everyone in the conference. Uh, at, after the end of the workshop. So sociocracy is still nascent in cooperatives, especially here in the United States. I've been exploring them in other countries as well, and it seems like it's still relatively new, but we're also getting some pretty good reports where in general where people have implemented it and implemented it mindfully. They seem to be satisfied with it. The, the holy grail here in co-op governance, what we've been looking for that I think sociocracy might represent is a governance structure that is easy to bootstrap and yet still very democratic and that is flexible enough so that it can be adapted and evolved <clears throat> as we go forward. And that is the big challenge. Co-ops, at least here in the United States, they can take a very long time for co-ops to start up and bootstrap themselves because you've got ordinary people trying to design a complex enterprise and you're trying to do it democratically, which has complexities of its own. So we're trying to do two very complex things at the same time. And this is, this is an enterprise where people's livelihoods or some critical aspect of their life is being provided, some critical need that they have often is being provided by the co-op. So we're trying to provide very fundamental economic needs with a grassroots democracy. So we need a way of implementing a, a democratic governance model, but something that doesn't take a huge amount of time and effort. And I believe that sociocracy may rep represent this. The, the very basic structure of sociocracy is relatively easy for people to adopt. Sociocratic processes are easy to adopt. And, um, and yet it's also flexible and that's very important. As the co-op evolves and grows, it needs to be able to adapt its governance structure, and it still needs to have a good basic governance structure that it can start off with quickly and easily. I believe sociocracy, from what I understand so far about sociocracy, it really strikes this balance, and I think it could have a huge effect, a huge and positive impact on the co-op world in terms of uh, making startup and representation of the member needs uh, relatively quick and easy. So, uh, and, and also allowing people to evolve their governance structure fairly quickly and easily as they go along. So that's my sense of sociocracy. We see in the worker co-op world and especially in the platform co-op world, um, sociocracy has been beginning to take root. There are other models, but from what we've seen, it tends to lend itself best to these models. I think with worker co-ops and in particular, because worker co-ops have workplace democracies, that democracy, that grassroots democracy is something that people are operating within on a, a daily basis. And, uh, and it's something upon which they are very dependent. And so I believe uh, sociocracy is a particularly good fit for worker co-ops. We're also seeing a lot of interest in it in the uh, platform cooperativism uh, model. And I want to tell you a little bit about the efforts of the co-op circle, the, socioc the sociocracy for all co-op circle. Um, we have been developing uh, 
some thoughts and methods and approaches for how to introduce and adapt sociocracy to different co-op models. And we've been uh, moving forward with our plan uh, that it involves both creating content for people to study about how sociocracy is working and can work in co-ops. We intend to promote the idea and we also intend to support the implementation of sociocracy in co-ops. Our co-op circle has a couple of practitioners and a couple of co-op developers in it as well. And so we do intend to have an evaluation process in our group as well so that as we go forward, we can evaluate our efforts and improve them and adjust them. And we're hopeful that our efforts will be uh, meaningful to people in the co-op world that are looking to find a better approach to governing their co-ops. Towards that end, we have also created a manifesto for wholesome cooperation published on the Grassroots Economic Organizing website. Grassroots Economic Organizing, or GEO, has been covering solidarity economics and grassroots economics for close to 40 years in the United States and around the world. And so we can find this manifesto for wholesome cooperation there where we've laid out some of the basic ideas and intentions, why we think sociocracy is a good fit for the cooperative world and what, uh, how we want to promote it. So this is uh, the manifesto that which we have just recently published to the world. And we, um, GEO has also uh, supported the effort by offering uh, a portal page, in a sense, a theme page on sociocracy, also known as dynamic governance, um, where we've got links to quite a few in the manifesto and many other links and articles that have been propagated, articles on the basics, getting down into the details of it, um, citing case studies we've been able to produce about co-ops. So we have these two very important resources uh, that Grassroots Economic Organizing has gracefully offered to host in terms of our manifesto and our theme page. I uh, hope that's helpful to you. Um, actually wrapping up a little early, um, but I wanted to uh, just emphasize for a moment that I have worked extensively with uh, board structures and collectivist structures, my own worker co-op. I spent 10 years in a worker co-op in the Washington DC area, and we worked nationally with various clients. We were programmers, IT specialists, and um, so I come from the perspective of having been a worker owner. And for the last nine years, I've also been very actively participating in co-op development as a freelance co-op developer. So I come to this as both a worker owner and a practitioner in co-op development. Uh, I've served on a number of co-op boards, nonprofit boards, and operated within a variety of collectives. And so I'm very interested in hearing any, in addition to whatever questions people have, I'm very interested in any experiences people would like to share about their experiences with boards, their experiences with collectives, and their experiences with sociocracy. Certainly anyone on the call who has experience uh, considering or implementing sociocracy within a co-op very much would like to hear from you in this session in the 11 minutes that we have left. Um, but uh, we're, we're definitely very much looking forward to uh, finding more co-ops that um, that are using sociocracy or are considering it. I believe there are more out there, perhaps many more than we've been able to find. Co-ops tend to operate a little bit in isolation. Co-ops are often inwardly focused and can find it challenging to find the resources to properly network with other co-ops. Um, and so uh, we're, we're still, you know, we're still at the point very much where we're trying to gather case studies and make contact with co-ops using sociocracy and considering sociocracy. We're trying to build up that portfolio. And so I see we have some items in the chat for which I am grateful. And um, uh, feel free to put your questions in the chat at any time from now on. And um, I will begin to field these questions. Um, and the first question uh, about the New Economy Coalition. Yes, I am planning to attend the Common Bound Conference in June. Um, I am part of a collective of people in the city of Baltimore, Maryland, uh, that has been uh, similar to the Democracy at Work Network, 
we are experienced worker owners offering assistance to people in the state of Maryland and the city of Baltimore who are uh, uh, in need of uh, assistance starting up worker co-ops. And we've developed a, uh, a day-long session, which we call the Worker Co-op Jumpstart, which is sort of an intensive worker co-op development seminar. And the Common Bound Conference has asked us to take the entire day on Friday at Common Bound and present our Worker Co-op Jumpstart workshop. So I will be there in June. I am familiar with their work, and we're looking forward to blending uh, our peer-to-peer -peer worker co-op development strategy at, uh, with Common Bound, and I hope to uh, to promote sociocracy in a number of different ways while I'm there. Um, so thank you for asking that. I think I see a question from Jerry. Uh, just to, uh, to say that uh, Jennifer, Ted, and I will also be at Common Bound, and uh, uh, Jim and I have put in a proposal for a workshop on sociocracy for co-ops, and uh, uh, Jennifer Ted has put in a, a proposal for a workshop, and I have also another one. So there's, if, if the uh, proposals are approved, there may be several sessions on sociocracy at Common Bound. Thank you for that. that uh, thank you for that, Jerry. And we want to make sure we promote that. And, um, and I, we, when we hear back one way or the other on the acceptance of our workshops, we'll be sending out email to folks and letting them know looks to be a very interesting conference. Um, I see that Wes has a slightly different question about scale. Wes, would you like to put that question out? Do you want to stop screen sharing so we can see each other? Ah, thank you for that reminder. There, that's better. Thank you very much. Much better to see people's faces. Wes said in the, in the uh, comments he had a slightly different question about scale. Wes, would you like to ask that? Okay, a... it's really trying to get a good grasp on the kind of organized effort and where it may not. Um, for example, in the UK, we've got a very large organization who manages and runs our train system. Uh, and to talk about bringing that back into public hands. But obviously that's distributed, uh, it's, it's national, uh, it, it's, it has central goals to meet. Uh, but could sociocracy actually plug into that type of system? Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're facing similar questions with some of the large food co-ops and other organizations here in the United States. My sense, and I'm gonna invite others on the call who are more familiar with this than I am, including Jerry, but my sense is that it, where you're talking about thousands or tens of thousands of participants, uh, you may end up with more of a hybrid structure where you have some representatives uh, chosen by larger numbers of people to serve on particular circles, but it's more distributed and more democratic than your typical board structure where you might have 20,000 people electing nine board members and the loss of representation that tends to happen between those two layers uh, does anyone else, uh, is anyone else more familiar than I am with these very large scale um, approaches to sociocracy and how the interest of thousands or tens of thousands of people can be represented in sociocracy? I'm not hearing anyone. I understand there are entire cities that are working on this, um, but um, I would invite anyone to interrupt or post into the chat uh, as they develop that. Um, and I'm getting a five minute warning from Jerry. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't be more help on that, Wes, but that's a very important discussion and I encourage us to carry it forward. Um, hey, Jim? Yes. Yeah, um, the only example that I know of is uh, an, an interview that Jerry himself did with uh, somebody from uh, a gentleman in India uh, about uh, neighborhood parliaments you can find on YouTube. And uh, it has 280,000 neighborhood neighborhood groups there that are operate sociocratically. Okay, and so I see they can make a very decentralized sort of cellular approach to large scale sociocracy, and uh, that reminds me a little bit of a self directed work team approach that we see in some of the larger co ops here in the U S. that are seeking to uh, push the collectivist structure as far as they can. I see that. Um, Someone from Sussex co-housing uh, is using sociocracy and considering becoming a co-op. That's good news. Uh, yes, see you at Common Bound, Ben. 
Um, I see from Abby Kempson, a 70 member worker co-op in the UK considering sociocracy. And yep, uh, the collectivist structure uh, is a little tough when you have 70 people, I understand that. Um, I encourage you to study, if, and feel free to follow up with me, the worker co-op I mentioned a, a moment ago, Rainbow Grocery in the city of San Francisco, California, 240 worker owners. They use what they call a self-directed work team structure. They have um, 14 independent departments within the grocery store. Most of them are the retail departments, such as dairy or bread, or bake, baked goods. Each department within the co-op functions as a semi-autonomous collective. And then they have a structure by which they federate themselves. So if you can imagine a grocery store with 240 worker owners functioning with 14 collectives functioning as a small federation, something very similar to a federation of cooperatives, very successful worker owned grocery store in San Francisco. You might consider looking at that um, if you have a large collectivist structure. Um, Self-directed work teams are a very interesting model here that I think can be have many similarities to the way sociocracy uses circles. And there have been some very interesting experiments even among large corporations in the US in which self-directed work teams have been shown to be very efficient, very effective. How large an question, uh, there's the question from Wes, how large an organization can it support? Um, again, interested in any thoughts anyone else has on that. Um, from Eric, can we, ah yeah, contact info. My contact information is at the bottom of the sheet here. I will type it into the chat. Um, and um, we have two minutes left for any other questions or thoughts that anyone has. Um, I'm putting my email address into the chat. Pardon my typing. Um, definitely happy to stay in touch with uh, the co-op circle of sociocracy. Um, we'd, we'd, our, the co-op circle would definitely love to have more participation from people from marginalized communities or people of color um, to make sure that we're emphasizing our uh, inclusive approach. We've had a strong upsurge in interest in worker co-ops from people here in the United States uh, in worker cooperatives. And so we're definitely looking to extend that around the world to the extent that we can. Um, we have a couple of minutes left. Uh, common market co-op in Maryland. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm familiar, I believe. That's um, based in Frederick, the city of Frederick, if I, I believe that's correct. Thank you for that pointer to common market. I will follow up with them and see where they stand. Um, I, I will say that um, uh, to the extent that we've been able to uh, discover uh, co-ops using sociocracy and encouraging it. Uh, we are finding in general that even though the implementation of it is somewhat starts out on a somewhat informal basis, uh, the satisfaction level with it tends to remain high. Um, I'm in, I've been conducting this case study with um, our table, the our table co-op in the Pacific Northwest United States. And they generally report significant satisfaction with it even though it seems they have not fully implemented it. They don't necessarily have double linking, for example. And um, their, uh, their use of sociocratic uh, decision making within each circle often seems to be not particularly rigorous. And yet what they find is, you know, if they, they get frustrated with a group, they'll sort of up their game and intensify their, their adherence to sociocratic practices and then things get better. So I thought that was one interesting thing. Uh, about uh, their implementation. Um, the uh, Julian's question, how does a board which may be legally required and have particular powers in law work with sociocracy? Um, I believe that if you have one circle that is designated as the board and the legal directors of the co-op, as in Bruce Fortier, that they could function legally as a board even if they have accountability uh, uh, even if they had a, accountability to other circles. I don't, you may, that's an interesting question. The board may need to be the top circle, so to speak, uh, in order to be legally binding. Uh, the law will hold them accountable for the performance of the organization. So that is an important consideration when designing your circles is that if you do have to have a board, 
uh, that your board may need to be the top circle and represent uh, the final word as far as the law is concerned. We're at 26 after, so we're out of time. Thank you very much. Sorry if we had to blast through this presentation, but uh, I hope that was helpful and I look forward to hearing from everyone who is interested in this. Please help us spread the word and find co-ops that are using or that are interested in using sociocracy. Thank you again for your time and attention.